<laughs> Open up your Bible to 1 Kings chapter 17. If you have a King James Bible, uh, that's what I'll be reading out of. So 1 Kings chapter 17. Too many times we form relationships with the wrong foundation. You know, a marriage takes three people to function properly. And no, it's not man, woman, and the government. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what binds two people together. When two people become one flesh, what causes them to become one flesh is that they are bound by our Father in heaven, by the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what makes a husband and a wife. That's what makes a marriage. You know, I think we forget in our generation, in the generation we live today, you know, people, you know, they want to go to church. They want to have a, a ceremony, a wedding ceremony, and they want to put on a show. But then they go home. They don't open up their Bibles. Uh, they don't talk about God anymore, you know. They don't pray. So I want to talk real briefly about prayer today and, and the power the, um, of prayer and the power of God of having God at the center of our relationships and the importance of it. First Kings chapter 17, starting in verse 1, the Bible says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, or excuse me, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. So Elijah is a prophet, you know. I, I just want to give you a little context of what's going on. Elijah is a prophet of God. He's a man of God. And King Ahab is the king of Israel. And he, he just took over uh, as king of Israel. And, and King Ahab is a wicked king. You know, he's an ungodly man. Uh, he, he doesn't follow the commandments of God. He causes Israel to sin and, and start worshiping false gods. And, and they fall into all kinds of wicked sins. So Elijah comes on the scene and, and he goes straight up and tells the king, Hey, you know, uh, he's, he's basically telling him, Hey, because uh, the kingdom of Israel is so far away from God, I'm going to rebuke it in the name of the Lord. And I'm going to stop the rain from coming down. Right? There, there will be no more rain until I say there's going to come rain again. So basically, uh, the, you know, uh, the prophet Elijah, you know, he, he, he said, hey, king, you think you're so powerful? You think you're so mighty? You know, I'm a prophet of the Lord. I'm a man of God. You know, I'm going to show you the power of God. You know, I'm going to basically lock down this whole nation, you know, this whole country. I'm going to quarantine this place. No more rain until I say so, until further notice. Verse 2. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I, that, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So God commanded the ravens to uh, feed Elijah. Um, so he went and did according to the word of the Lord. Elijah's obeying God. Um, for he went and dwelt by the brook of Cherith, that is before Jordan, and the, rains br and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. So obviously, you know, uh, Elijah rebuking, Israel, rebuking the king of Israel, he, that made the king very upset, right? So, so God, you know, told Elijah, hey, look, the king's man, he's going to come after you, so I want you to uh, take off over here, go, go hide over here for a while. And I'm going to take care of you there, right? And, and, and he caused this miracle of the ravens feeding him bread and, and, and gave him plenty to eat and drink, right? So the Lord told him exactly where to go, what to do, so all his needs were met. And, you know, and let this be a lesson to us, you know, if you're struggling during this lockdown time, this quarantine, you know, now's the time to pray. You know, now's the time to get right with God and, and trust that the Lord will provide for you. Let's continue in, in reading uh, verse number 7. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. So, you know, God heard Elijah's prayer. He stopped the rain. He answered it. And um, why did he do this? Because the, the prayer came from a man of God, a man who, who was serving God, who was obedient and faithful to God. Verse 8, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. 
So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he come to the, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, Elijah, go make yourself a sandwich, man. I'm a feminist. Oh, <laughs> wait, that's not, that's not what she said. I'm just kidding. Uh, verse 12. And she said, As the Lord God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I might go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat and die. So, you know, there's this famine going on in Israel. You know, she, she tells the uh, she basically tells the prophet Elijah, hey, man, if I give you something to eat, this is the last I got. You know, I won't be able to feed myself. I won't be able to feed my son. Um, so, you know, the whole land of Israel's got this famine going on. And, and you know what? I just want to I just want to make a quick comparison. You know, I'm convinced that this whole coronavirus thing going around the planet right now could just be God answering our prayers. You know, just like Elijah rebuked Israel, maybe God's answering our prayer saying, Lord, do something so that everybody turns back to God, right? This could be the work of God, that he's bringing this famine, this virus upon this planet, trying to give us all a wake-up call, you know, like, hey, we need to get back to following God. We need to be get, get back to doing things the right way. You know, this whole 80% of women initiating uh, no-fault divorce, this wickedness, you know, our land is filled with with, with, a, with such a high divorce rate that it, it, marriage is a joke nowadays, right? All this fornication, all this adultery going on, all these single parent households. You know, we need to get back to doing things God's way. We need to start restoring our relationship with God so we can restore our relationships with each other. You know, you see, just like Elijah prayed to God to stop the rain because he was trying to give Israel a wake-up call. And, you know, this woman had the audacity, even though God commanded her to take care of Elijah, she had the audacity to question a prophet of the Lord. You know, this guy who just stopped the rain, who just commanded the rain to stop, and it stopped and it obeyed him. You know, so let this be a lesson to the women, you know, that when a man of God tells you to do something, when God tells you to do something, don't question him. Just do it. Just do it. Let's continue. Verse, chapter, uh, verse 13. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make but make uh, but make me there thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me. And after make make for thee and thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruse of oil fail, until the day of the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. So what happens is, you know, the woman's telling Elijah, hey, you know, I'd love to help you, sir, but this is the last of the food we got. And if I give it to you, um, me and my son are going to die. And Elijah told her, hey, look, you don't have any fear. God's going God's to provide for us. In fact, he's going and, to, and, and, and he tells her something odd, like, hey, after you make something for me to eat, go make yourself something to eat. And she's sitting there like, dude, if I make you something to eat, we're going to be out of food. And he's like, no, we're not. God's going to provide. Just, just trust me. Just put your faith in God. He's going to provide our needs, you know. And, and let this be another lesson to all of us, you know. God's going to provide our needs. He may not provide uh, all the desires of our heart, all everything we want, all the luxuries, you know. He may not provide cell phones and, you know, you know, God wasn't going to rain down toilet paper from above. But he provided food. <laughs> he provided the basic necessities to life, didn't he? You know, and, and that's what God promises us, that if we obey him, we trust in him, put our faith in him he's going to take care of our basic needs our food and our raiment let's continue verse 15 i'm going to kind of try to cruise through this and she went and did according to the saying of elijah and she and she and he in her house did eat many days and the barrel of meal was uh meal wasted not neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the lord which he uh, which he spake by elijah so god spoke through Elijah. You know, a lot of people think that the Bible was written by man, but actually God spoke through man, right? So God is just using the voice of Elijah to say these words. It's actually the word of the Lord. Um, but that's a side note. Um, but basically God answered Elijah's prayers. The, the uh, Elijah prayed um, the word of the Lord that, hey, the rain's not going to come. And, you know, the woman also had enough faith 
to do as Elijah said. So, you know, she didn't rebuke him anymore. She said, okay, I have faith in you, Elijah. God told me to do this. You told me to do this. I'm going to do this. Verse 17. And it came to pass after these things that the son of, uh, that the, son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. Wow. No breath left in him. So what do you do, die? And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O, thou, o man of God? Art thou come unto, um, to me to call my, uh, come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and slay my son? So she thinks, you know, is it because of something I sinned? Is that why, why I died? You know, is that what, what you're doing here, Elijah, to basically curse me for my sins? You know, so... We see here that he, uh, uh, her son gets sick. In fact, it, it looks to me like he died, right? He was out of breath. He died. And she starts blaming Elijah. You know, <laughs> typical woman, right? You know, as soon as things go bad, they get all emotional and start pointing fingers at people they have no business pointing fingers at. The, the one guy who's there to help her, you know, she's pointing fingers at him, right? So ladies, don't do that, right? The, the, the man in your life... He's there, he's there to help you. You know, you, you, you shouldn't be nagging him so much. But, you know, um, I don't want to get off on that. So just put your faith in the Lord, right? The Lord will provide. You don't believe me? <laughs> well, maybe you'll believe the Word of God. Let's continue reading. Let's finish this story. Verse 19. 1 Kings uh, chapter 17, verse 19. And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed and he cried unto the Lord and said O Lord my God hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son so the son was dead first Kings 17 uh, chapter 21 and he stretched himself upon the child three times so this is magic number three right and he cried unto the Lord and said O Lord my God I pray thee let this child's soul come in, uh, come into him again. And Elijah starts praying. He's praying with all his heart. He's crying, right? And that's what we need to do. When things are going bad, when things are going rough in our life, we need to start praying to God. You know, and I want you to notice the power of prayer in the next verse. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. You know, Elijah didn't have any special powers to bring people back from the dead. He prayed to God. He prayed to the one who did have power to, to perform this miracle. This was not Elijah's power. All Elijah did was pray to God. You know, and he didn't know if God was going to do this or not. Um, verse 23, let's finish. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out, out, out unto the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See that thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in thy mouth is truth. Listen, what I want you to notice here is that these two people, they were praying to God together, right? They were both praying that God would perform a miracle and bring their son back. Elijah the prophet... And this widow woman, you know, they came together, they prayed to God, and God answered them. He performed a miracle. Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. I know that was a long introduction. Um, in today's video, I'm talking about the power of prayer, and not just prayer, but the power of making Christ the center focus of all of our relationships. Notice in this story, there was three people involved here. You had I said there's three, the, three is the magic number, right? You had Elijah, you had the widow woman, and you had God, right? That was what these three uh, together, working together, were able to perform this miracle of raising this child back, to dead, uh, back from the dead. So it's very important to make sure that God's into, in our relationships, and that's what I want to talk about today. And, you know, I'm going to try to make this uh, as brief as possible, but flip over to the New Testament, Matthew chapter 18. Um, I want to tie this story of Elijah in together with what Jesus taught us in the New Testament. So let's go to uh, the New Testament and Gospel according to St. Matthew. That's the first book of the New Testament, chapter 18, and we're going to be halfway through the chapter in verse 18. So Matthew 18, 18, let's, uh, and these are the words of Jesus. These are the words of Jesus. Jesus says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall, shall agree on earth 
as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The context of this verse is, you know, Jesus just finished teaching that, you know, we have, if we have an issue with somebody, right, whether it's, whether it's a stranger or our friends and family in the church, right, what we, if we have an issue with them and, and or, you know, if anything's wrong, what we need to do is go to them one-on-one privately and talk to them about it. You know, if, if, if we think that they're doing something wrong to us, we need to go talk to them about it. Put it on the table, you know, in the name of the Lord. You know, go up to them and say, hey, in the name of the Lord, this is what the Lord has said. This is what, you know, I have witnessed happening, and this is how I think it should be correct. And you, and you try to resolve that um, with the person one-on-one in private first, right? You don't want to humiliate anybody in public or anything like that, and you don't want to make a big scene, Um you definitely don't want to start an argument or fight, but you go to this person with an honest, sincere um, attempt to reconcile with them. You know, because many times, you know, we don't know if the other person did something wrong, you know, or they did they did something on accident or on purpose, you know. So we need to allow people the opportunity to explain themselves, and we need to allow them to uh, apologize and forgive them before we start judging them, right? So, and Jesus, you know, he. Uh, he teaches that, just like I think you know, uh, the prophet Elijah. He he rebuked the king. I'm sure he gave the king fair warning before he just called down no more rain, right? I mean, the king said no, not gonna do it, right? So, I'm sure uh, this was a last resort where Elijah said, all right, that's it, no more rain, right? You're not gonna you're not gonna do what's right. Then psh, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna call on a uh, I'm gonna call on a famine in the name of the Lord. You know, so. Um, the important thing I want to I want to stress here is that you don't want to just make relationships with people. You don't just want to make friends with people um, based on material things like oh this person's good looking or or oh we're golf buddies whatever right or you know oh this this she 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 so she helps me with my with my makeup or you know you you want to make your friendships built on Jesus Christ. That needs to be our foundation. You know, because Jesus said, because like, let let me, let me say this. I don't want to get off track here. Let me, let me say this. Let's say you go to somebody, right? And and this is your brother or sister in Christ. They're in your church. You know, they're not, they're, you you have a, you have a, you started a relationship with them and you go to them and they don't want to listen to you, right? Well, then Jesus tells us, you know, what we need to do after that is he tells us, you need to get a witness you need to get a friend or somebody with you and then both of you can go over there and um, try to reconcile you know because sometimes you know uh, it's good to get a fresh pair of eyes a fresh pair of ears who who don't have anything to do uh, with the situation who can kind of uh, moderate it you know if you think of like a courtroom like a jury uh, you know people who can kind of witness and and kind of even out the, the scales because they, they're not involved, right? They don't have any emotions involved, you know. But unfortunately, what usually happens uh, with people in the church is, you know, they, they don't do this. They don't follow this teaching of Jesus. You know, they just, oh, if somebody does something wrong to them, then they just, oh, hell with the, <coughs> excuse me, hold on. You know, they'll, 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 they'll just leave them alone. They may just leave the church. They'll break up their friendship or whatever. But let me tell you guys something. You know, God wants us to get along. He wants us all to get along together because God gave each of us different talents. He gave us all special abilities and gifts. And, you know, what one person may be bad at, maybe another person's good at. You know, what I'm good at, you know, maybe somebody else can't do, right? So God wants us all to bring our talents together so that we can all use our special talents and abilities for the good and for the glory of God. You know, the the Bible says the church operates like a body and in each person in the church is a member of the body, you know, just, and each person serves a specific purpose, you know, just like our bodies do. And, you know, verse 18 is very important. You know, Jesus says, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. You know, whatsoever shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. This means that, you know, heaven and earth are bound together, you know. Like for example, like when we when we come together with people, 
you know, and, I, and let me tell you a quick story, you know, a while back, you know, I, I was coming together with a friend who called, who called him, called me his brother, and then just out of nowhere, um, he found my videos on the internet, and he saw that I had, uh, uh, I was MGTOW, and then I preached to, uh, to the MGTOW community, and, and he immediately just threw me out of the group, didn't even try to talk to me any, he didn't even probably listen to any of my videos, any of my content, and, and he just ghosted me, and he, and he starts railing on me um, in front of the rest of the group, and, and he, he tries to make me look bad, right? See, that's not what Jesus taught. Jesus taught, hey, if you have a problem with somebody, go with them and try to discuss it with them in private, then bring two or more witnesses, and then if all else fails, bring the whole group involved, right? Um, so what my point here is, you know, we can't just break connections with people here in this life. You know, if you're talking to somebody, if you're friends with somebody, the Bible says what whatsoever is bound in earth shall be bound in heaven, you know, so there's power in forming our relationships and coming together with people, right? So we shouldn't just lightly just burn bridges uh, between people and and things like that. The Bible says if by all means, you know, we're supposed to get along with people, live peaceably with people, whether they're believers or non-believers, but especially if they're a fellow brother or sister in Christ. We need to really try extra hard to um, make sure our brothers and sisters in Christ, our relationships are, are solid. You know, we don't have any animosity between each other because the power of God ceases to work in people's lives when, and, you know, when, they, when they're not together. Because what I'm trying to say here is I'm trying to point you back to Elijah, right? Elijah and this, and this widow woman were together. Right, and they both were praying to God to perform this miracle, and I'm, it's not to say that that Elijah by himself wouldn't have, God wouldn't have answered his prayer, and and the woman by herself wouldn't have answered that prayer, but them working together has has even more of an impact, even more um, power when we come together as believers and, and we pray for the same thing. Because take a look at verse 19 here, Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. Jesus says. Again, I say unto you that if two shall agree on earth as touching anything that, shall, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. You see, there's more power when we come together as brothers and sisters in prayer. Um, when, we, when we pray together the same thing, right? We're praying for the same thing. God blesses us more, you know, when we're, when we're working together because God wants us to work together. God wants us to be friends with each other and brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus is telling us it's really important that our relationship, our relationships are built on the foundation of Jesus Christ, right? We don't want to build relationships um, outside of the purpose of glorifying God. I mean, it's good to have friends to laugh and to joke and to have fun. Don't get me wrong, but we can never forget that our main purpose should be focusing on serving the Lord Jesus Christ and glorifying His name. Look, look how powerful chapter, um, or excuse me, verse 20 is. Jesus says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. He doesn't say He's in the midst of one person. He says two people. But, you know, I also want you to note that how amazing it is that Jesus said two people is all you need. Just two. Can, can, can just two people get along? Can just two people come together? I mean, how hard is it nowadays to just get a man and a woman to come together? I mean, with all the, the failure, failed marriages, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It's so sad, right? And I think it's all because we're not doing things in the name of the Lord. We're not making Jesus the center of our relationships. Now, that's not to say it has to be a man and a woman, because notice Jesus didn't say, hey, it has to be one man, one woman, or it does have, has to be two men, two women, right? He, he didn't differentiate. He said, hey, any two people, any two people can get, gather together in my name. And, you know, that's what I do love about the brotherhood, the brotherhood of, you know, I can get together with a brother in Christ and say, hey, let's pray, brother, in the name of the Lord. And, you know, we could have unity right there. And Jesus Christ will come and he will answer our prayers more powerfully when we're coming together. And the more people, I think, that get together in the name of Jesus, the merrier, right? See, my message, my message today, guys, is this. It's a simple message. Is that don't forget to pray, you know, when you're with your friends. You know, don't forget to bring up the name of the Lord Jesus because Jesus' name has power. You know, let me say this. 
when you bring up the name of the Lord Jesus, there's going to be a division. You know, the people who reject Jesus, they're going to run away. And, but the people who embrace Jesus, man, those are the people that are going to, you're going to have power of the power of God. You're going to be able to call down uh, or you're going to be able to uh, send your prayers up and the blessings will be rained down upon you, right? Because let me, let me tell you this, the name of Jesus is so powerful that it'll protect you. You know, because the people who don't want anything to do with Jesus, they'll run away from you. You know, and, and you don't want those people around you anyway. You know, if they don't love the Lord Jesus Christ, then you know that you, you shouldn't really really be building much of a relationship. You can't build a relationship with this person. There's no foundation because our foundation needs to be on Christ. I mean, don't get me wrong. If this person's unsaved, if they're a non-believer, you know, you, you should, you should tra- try to witness to them. Try to share the gospel with them. But if they reject it, and you try again and they reject it, just forget about it. Just try to live peace peace among them. But understand that this relationship can't go anywhere until you lay down the foundation of Jesus Christ first. And if they don't want to listen, hey, that's between them and God at this point. You did you did your job. You tried the witness to them. So um, but but back to back to Jesus' message, you know, he taught that it's important for us to get along with each other. He taught us how powerful it can be that he that if you're gathered with two people or more, he, Jesus Christ is right there. It's, it's as if there's a third person right there with you, right? So if you have an issue with somebody, a brother in Christ, um, go to them, try to resolve the problem, try to restore that because we want to restore the power of God. We don't want to limit God, right? You don't want to just um, willy-nilly just break break up uh, break up relationships with people, whether whether it be. Um, uh, an intimate relationship especially or just a brother and sister in Christ you don't want to just break that bond because what's loosed on earth will be loosed in heaven and and that's powerful that's powerful relationships are powerful um, so just remember to put to put God first in your relationship okay make sure your relationship is built on the Lord Jesus Christ um, that, that 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 should be one of the first things that you talk to somebody about if you, if you meet a brand new person you know sp- talking about sports is great talking about similar hobbies is great but uh the lord jesus christ is the greatest he's the greatest he's what brings us all together he's what because everybody's different everybody has different ideas and you know and, and and different um goals and you know different talents and the different ways of thinking you know the only thing that's going to bring us together in unity is Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, if, if, you're, if you're gathered together in my name, there's power in that. Just like when the prophet Elijah gathered with his widow woman, there was power, there was so much power that they were able to pray to God and raise her son from the dead. Anyway, that's my message for the day, guys. Don't forget the, the um, wonderful power of prayer. And um, let's let's try to Make Jesus Christ the center of our focus, or the center of our relationships, the foundation, and see if we can't um, start one block at a time, one brick at a time, and, re- and rebuild our rebuild our society for um, for the next generation, and so it's stronger. Anyway, that's my message for the day, guys. You guys have a, uh, a great day, wonderful day. Um, it's a little overcast here in Denver, but I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my day, and you guys do the same. God bless. Um, as always, I'm going to give the God the last word, and I'm going to be reading from... Uh, the New Testament, James chapter 5. James is one of the last books of the Bible. Um, if you got, went to Revelation, it went too far. Um, but James chapter 5, starting in verse 13 to the end of the chapter. Have a good day, guys. God bless. The Bible says, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing, let, let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, 
If any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which covereth the sinner from the error of his ways shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Amen. God bless.